Today I'm in Letchworth in Hertfordshire. I'm at Ogle Models. These guys are a leading model and prototype manufacturer. We're here on behalf of Fanuc. Just 18 months ago they bought a brand new robo drill. I'm going to go inside and talk to Len, who's the managing director, and also Ian, who operates the machine. <laughs> Then you've got a brand new machine here, a Fanuc Robo Drill D21 Li A5. This is the bigger version of the Robo Drill, isn't it? Yeah. How long has it been here, and why did you buy it? It's been here about 18 months now, and the reason we brought it is we, we, you're always on a quest to, to produce things faster and better quality. And what we've got is a lot of other machines that are very just ordinary CNC, three-axis, but they're relative, they're just basic machines, and we wanted to move on so that we can produce much higher quality parts and we can do it faster, because it's always a drive for everyone nowadays to become more efficient on everything you do, to remain competitive. How, how much faster were you looking to make parts when you got this machine, it's, and how much faster... It's what's not really, we don't deal in production at all, so it's only a one-off, and, and you could say it, it's almost irrelevant because it's all down to programming, but it's just, because it, it, it runs faster and it produces a better finish, and it, and it just it really has. When we've got a, few, a little production run of just a few 20 of us, it's just completely, um, it's twice as fast as the other machines, really. And it's the quality that we get is the big thing, the quality and the accuracy. What are you actually cutting on the machine, Len? Is it a variety of products? Yeah. It, it, on this machine, we do so, some model board. Most of what we machine in-house is nearly all model board on the other machines, but on this machine, it's nearly all plastic and metal. And let's have a look at these ones. Can you just tell us what they are or what this is yeah. uh, and, and roughly how long it might have taken you to make it? Yeah, these, these are two paddles that we made for a customer and they'd have got plastic paddles in the car and they wanted the feel of aluminium. And so we did a little run, we did a few off and what we had to do was snap the plastic covers off the ones, the original ones, and then make a, an aluminium one that was fully polished and then chrome plated that would snap back on so they could actually test it. And um, we started off by machining them out of solid aluminium billet, obviously. And we started on one of the older machines, and then luckily we got this, the uh, new Ro Fanuc Robo drill, halfway through the project, and we were able to, to go over to the, new, to the new machine. And once we'd set it up and got it going, it was twice as fast as the other one, and we were getting a much better finish, especially with the small cutters. With the small cutters, yeah. Now this machine, as well, is a bit bigger, isn't it, than the the smaller Robo drills? Was that part of your decision as well? Did you want something a little bit bigger than the, the smaller one? Yeah, that was the biggest. We wanted the biggest Robo drill there was because we also wanted to put the fourth axis on it, and because you put the fourth axis on, you naturally lose a bit more space anyway. And we're always put. We just need as big as machines as possible, really. So you wanted to get all the all, all the uh, the hallmarks of the high speed machining yeah. capabilities with as big a bed as you could. Yeah, exactly that, yeah. And it's just an impressive machine. When you see it at the shows, it's an impressive, you can see it's a high quality machine and we've not been disappointed. Good, good. Okay, I'm gonna go and have a chat with Ian because I know he, yeah. he, he enjoys using this machine as well. So thank you very much for your time today, Len. Thank, thank you. you. Ian, it's always good to talk to somebody that uses the machine because you get a, a real insight into what it can do. What do you think of this purchase that you made here at Ogle Models? It's something, when I came here, I. Um, it's, a, it's a machine that I wanted Ogle to buy, to be honest. Um, I recommended it purely just because of the size of the machine, the footprint of the machine. Um, and it's, from my point of view, it's very, very easy to use. Um, uh, the controller is one of the best controllers I've used, and I've used two or three over the years. When you say controller, because I know you're, you're doing a lot of your uh, programming offline, aren't That's you? Right, yes. But the controller, you're talking about how to operate the machine. Yes, exactly. So with operating the machine, you've got to set up your component on the job. You've got to uh, set up your tools and tool offsets, things like that, and it's, it's quite straightforward. Um, the controller is actually quite intuitive. It tells you what to do rather than you having to remember what all the buttons are for and whatever, it's, it's quite clear and precise. I suppose it stands to reason really because it's a Fanuc machine with a Fanuc control. Exactly, exactly. What about little things like, well I say little things, but like the tool inside of this. These machines now, they're BT30, but they've got the BBT spindle nose on them. So they've got, they've got plenty of speed, but power as well. Do you need both of those? 
Yes, in some case, for, for what we do, because it's such a variety of work, one day I could be machining uh, quite a soft material, uh, a model board or a plastic, for instance. Then the next day, it would be aluminium or brass and even going to steels as well. So I need a very big variety um, and the power is very useful. And the speed control is obviously very important to me um, in changing, tool, in during tool changes. Um, I've got to decide when to slow the tool down, particularly if I'm tapping or drilling, for instance, because very often we run our machines overnight because um, we're usually doing very long programs. Would that be the case on this machine? Yes, yes. Very often um, I were plan to program something to run for 16 hours, which is like an overnight from when I leave at night to get turned up again in the next morning. So I'd use all of that time when I'm thinking about programming the machine. So it, that, that would either be more components that I put on the table, and it's a 700 by 400 table. A lot of our work we, we do are, is quite small components, so I can get a lot of components running in one go. And you're, the speed that you're running this machine at, because this is the high power version, they've got 20, 24,000 RPM capability. Do you, do you run up to that? Yes, absolutely. I'm very often using um, 0.5 cutters, 0.25 cutters. Um, I've even gone as small as a 0.1 cutter um, to do a lot of fine details in some of the model making we do, um, which could be logos or graphics in, engraved into a part. If you didn't have the speed, the cutter would just break. What about the feed rates as well? At that speed, the spindle speed, you, you, you want to be running at high feed rates as well to get the exactly. best yes, results. Exactly. One thing I have to remember is that although the cutter is turning, it's also rubbing at the same time. So that means it's got to move, because if I run too slow, the cutter will get hot. Um, it needs to be removing material all of the time and getting that swarp away from the flutes. So I have all that ability in my hands to go as fast as I like or as slow as I like, depending on what I'm doing. So you get a lot of better tool life as well. Let's talk about this. Yes. Uh, how fast do you machine this? Um, and yeah, spindle speed, feed rates, how long does it take and what is it? This, this component here is a, just a very simple um, polyurethane model board uh, component. As it is, model board's quite a soft material, so I can go as fast as I like. Um, it was 20,000 RPM running at 8,000 millimetres per minute. And so that's about as fast as the machine could keep up with, especially when it's going around the corners. Um, the, the machine would slow down naturally anyway, so it won't be able to keep up with 8,000 millimetres per minute. Or follow a program to that, and then the machine does the rest. It's a bit of a game changer for you then, this machine, by the sounds of it, the speed, what you can do in it, because you've also got your fourth axis unit and a bigger working envelope. So it's yes. perfect for you, is it? Yes, absolutely. I, we've got other machines here. Um, while I more or less exclusively work on this machine, because I don't need to move from it, because it's, I've got the size, I've got the speeds, I've got the power, I've got a fourth axis, and pretty much do everything I want to do.